Now we're going to come back to a topic that we hadn't really touched in a long time. We mentioned that we'd come back to it at some point in the future. Well, I guess now is that time. Um, if you remember back when we were talking about different data types within C Sharp, one of the top one of the data types we talked about was bool. If you remember, bool represented um, a variable that could hold either a true or a false value, and that's just about it. When we named our variables, we did some so we did so with a very special naming convention. The name was always in the form of a yes or no question. So, for example, is sky blue? That's definitely a yes or no question. Let's say, for example, it's three o'clock in the afternoon on a beautiful summer day. In this case, we could assign is sky blue to a value of true. And of course, we could output that and saying we could do it in a label, we could do it in the console, we could do a message box. Just to keep things simple so we don't have to do conversions, we're going to do so in a console. So the command to do so in a console would just be simply console dot right line. And then, of course, the variable is sky blue. Simple as that. Now you notice here that I actually assign a literal value of true into the is sky blue variable. I could do any form of expression that I wanted as long as it evaluated to a boolean result, either true or false. What that means is that I could also do variables, I could also do combinations of variables to form a single true false value, which I'm going to show you in just one second. So in order to illustrate these things, we're going to go to Visual Studio, and uh, just to show you this quick little demo that I have here, I've created three Boolean variables, val1, val2, and val3. And now I know they're not to the naming convention I just mentioned, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Each one I've given a starting value of true. Below that, I've created three more Boolean variables, and you can see that I've just given them the respective variables from above. Result1 is equal to val1, result2 is equal to val2, and so on and so forth. And then all I do below that is I simply output the three result values. I'm not outputting the values, not val1, val2, val3, just the result 1, 2, and 3. So if we were to run this program, we should get three trues, which we do, as expected. Now, of course, if I change any one of these, so if I change this to a false and I try to run it, that would then carry through to the actual output because the output says output the value of result 2, which is val2, which holds the value of false. Put this back to the way we had it. Um, the next thing I want to talk to you about was something called a Boolean operator. Now, we already know a few operators and uh, mathematical operators such as plus, minus, divide, multiply, modulus, and so on and so forth. Um, Boolean data actually has its own form of operator. It's got three operators in particular. Just to, dis just to discuss these, let me just get rid of all this. The three operators are the AND operator, the OR operator, and the NOT operator. So the way that we use these in C Sharp is AND uses the symbol ampersand, ampersand. OR uses the symbol vertical bar, vertical bar, which you can find just above your enter key typically on your keyboard. And then NOT uses the symbol exclamation mark. So there's certain rules that apply for all these, and they and they produce certain results. So for example, if I were to go back to C Sharp, Visual Studio in particular, um, and I were to change the value of result two equal to val two, and using the double ampersand val one, what it's going to do is it's going to perform an and operation. What and means is that all of the elements of the AND operation must be true for the result to be true. Think of it just like a mathematical operation. So we have some input and the processing, which is the AND in this case, and then there's going to be some output. So in order for this expression, val2 and val1, to be true, that means that all of the inputs, which are val2 and val1, must be true as well. So if we were to run this program, result2 is assign the result of this expression, and we run our program, we get a value of true. So let's go back there and let's change val1, or let's do val2 just for starters, to a false. When we run our program, this means that we're going to say, hey, is the result of val2 and val1 true or false? Well, val2 has a value of false, val1 has a value of true. 
the AND operator says that both must be true in order for the result to be true. So if we run this, we should get a false, since val2 actually holds a value of false, which we do. If we were to change them both to false, we should still get false, because the AND says that both must be true for the result to be true. And of course, we get false. You'll notice that now the original output is also false too for result 1. That's because result 1 is only assigned the value of val1, which is a false as well. So this is the basics for an AND. The second operator we have is something called an OR, using the double vertical bars. There we go. Have my keyboard on French for a second. Um, in order to use this, uh, it has a different rule. Instead of all the values must be true for the result to be true, the rule now is at least one of the inputs must be true for the result to be true. Now listen to that wording carefully. At least one. That means more than one can be true. All it takes is just one. Though. So that means if either val1 or val2 are true, or both of them are true, the result is going to be true. So right now we have them both set to false. So that means that the result should be a false because neither of them are true. To run this, we have false. Let's put val1 back to true. So now it says, is val2 true? No. Is val1 true? Yep, it is. So that means the result should be true because at least one is true. And again, we get true for our result too. Now we can actually combine um, these operators to make a more uh, a lengthy uh, op um, a lengthy boolean operation. So for example I could say val2 or val1 and I can also put in there again or val3. Again the rule says at least one of the inputs. Well we have three different operations here that are all taken into account. So if any one of these is equal to true, that means the results will be true. So we have val2, which has a value of false, val1, which has a value of true. I don't even need to check val3 anymore because we know that val1 got a true. And since this is an OR statement, that would be that would work. So we should upload the true, and we do. We can also, actually before we get into that, let's talk about the third and final one. So just to go back to the original way it was. The third and final one is the NOT operator. NOT essentially just means inverse or opposite. So for example, if I had this exclamation mark and then bracket val3, it's going to say, what's the current value of val3? What is it? Well, it's true. The NOT operator says, take it and give me the opposite. So if the current value of val3 is true, then the result of this statement would be false. So we run our program. We should end up with a false for the last one. And we do. The middle one is still false because we have out to the false. Let's put that back to true. We can do other things too. We can combine operators. So for example, I could say val, let's do this, val1 and val2. So this says, okay, give me the and of val1 and val2 because we always work just like Bemis, we always work from brackets and work our way out. So do the AND operation first, because it's inside the bracket. So VAL1 and VAL2. So this is saying true and true. Well, it's an AND operation, so all of them must be true, which they are. So this whole thing inside the brackets evaluates to a true. But then we take the NOT of that, so we should end up with a false. And we do. When we combine multiple multiple Boolean operators here, this is called a compound statement. So what we're going to be doing in the next few modules is we're going to be learning how to use these operators to actually produce something effective.